my heart was very wrong, so I will survive. I will survive. Hey, man. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, no, nothing, man. I'm just preparing to play Survival 9.1. Oh yeah? Well, do you have talent? <laughs> Covenant? <laughs> Legendary? Oh, I know where this is going. Um, rotation? Oh no. <laughs> and more! Uh, I will survive. But you know what else needs to survive? <laughs> our YouTube channel. <laughs> Which kind of needs likes and subscribes. Uh, if you like our content, of course. We're not just going to force everybody. But you know this shtick, right? It does actually help and it does improve the algorithm. So it gets passed to more people. The video, not anything else. Thank you. Two clicks. Bye-bye. Starting off with the first row. It comes down to the build you are running. In raids, ideally, Viper's Venom will work the best. Here, the goal is to maximize single target damage, and out of this row, Viper's Venom is the best tool to make that happen if you are running the Nessingwary Strapping Apparatus Legendary with the Implied Trap build. You will want, ideally, to maintain 100% uptime on your Serpent Sting, and doing it with an extra oomph is the way to go, since the biggest value here is that you can refresh Serpent Sting almost all the time without focus cost, which is great for the trap build. Again, alternatively, for AoE scenarios or all M plus encounters, take Alpha Predator. In AoE, focus management is more intense since you will be spending more of it. Alpha Predator works with another talent down the road that will help spread out your damage and takes advantage of your ability to use skill command on multiple targets. Outside of that, it improves focus management, which, to be fair, is what this entire row is trying to do. And it works if you don't plan on using the Trapping Apparatus Legendary. For the second row, there really is no other option than the Gorilla Tactics. This is both the best single target option due to the increase in bomb damage to your initial hit, but also AoE damage given by the second charge of bombs and the increase in initial hit damage. This contributes to the importance of Wildfire Bomb in your rotation, which will pop up later in the video. Third row comes down to personal preference. Usually, Natural Mending is going to be good if you struggle with survival <laughs> or are new to the spec. This increases the accessibility of exhilaration that can prevent a death or more, or at least help during progression by giving you overall sustain and lessening the stress of healers. In dungeons, you can go with camouflage for situations where your group wants to skip. This will save you an invisibility potion which would otherwise put a 5 minute cooldown on your DPS potion, or instead let you use the DPS potions and not run into the risk of needing to skip but having a cooldown on your invisibility potion. This is preferential and depends on your tank's route. Next up, another build defining row. For overall content, Mythic Plus ideally, take Blood Seeker. This will give you more attack speed based on how many targets you have bleed on, which comes from kill commanding a target with this talented. Since you will be running Alpha Predator as well, you will have overall more kill commands to go around and spreading the bleed out is easier when you consistently are fighting more than one target. For pure single target output, Steel Trap will be your choice if you are running a specific legendary, the Trapping Apparatus once again. The damage from it is good and clearly appreciated. The legendary, however, will boost the value of this one specifically since traps will become a part of your rotation. A note here, this build is arguably very difficult to play. There is a high risk of rotational error that comes with playing the trap build and you can potentially lose out on more damage than simply running Bloodseeker and mostly Wildfire Bomb synergies. But it is fun, it is challenging, and if you like pushing yourself for an obvious DPS gain, go for it. At the same time, you will do fine with the Bomb build. Next up is another utility row. All options here are viable. Post Haste will be your raid option where you will disengage and actually take great advantage from the sprint especially on the intermission phase of Painsmith, where reaching those spike openings is crucial. Works for anything that requires you to be just a bit faster to get to your target. Alternatively, in Dungeons, Binding Shot is a great kiting tool that can help and will help your tank kite. Stuff like, I don't know, the dogs and Halls of Atonement and things like that? Might not work for all affixes, <coughs> sanguine, but this comprises the toolkit that hunters are known for and people will appreciate you for. Born to be Wild is a good option if you can make use of reduced cooldowns. 
This is a bit more specific since it takes into account situations where you know you will need to shave off a few seconds off of your cooldowns. Otherwise, it's useless. Next up, another build defining role. Staying consistent with the guide, Mongoose Bite will be your ideal single target option in Raid that works really well with the trap build. You will have bursts of focus generation that can be spent on a lot of Mongoose Bite, however difficult the build tends to be. Alternatively, in Mythic Plus, the all reliable tip of the spear will be pretty solid. This works really well with the bomb build and weaves in smoothly with the wildfire infusion talent which we will look at in a second. This can also work in raids on bosses with adds or the 9 where you constantly cleave and so on. You will ideally play the bomb build then since Mongoose Bite is way better for the trap build. Lastly, Flanking Strike is an alternative in dungeons and high AoE situations. It deals good damage, generates a bunch of focus and gives you a small charge to keep uptime on the pack that your tank will probably kite here and there. It can be something extra to manage in terms of resources and cooldowns but pressing it when available should be good to get you started. And lastly, the seventh row, Birds of Prey will complete your heavy single target playstyle. With proper play and the trap build, this will net into long coordinated assault windows, kind of reminiscent of BFA survival. For optimal priority damage, this will be your best bet. Wildfire Infusion, on the other hand, is the ideal choice in dungeons and any and all AoE scenarios. Both raids and Mythic Plus dungeons can take advantage of this one. This will alter your rotation slightly, but overall is easier, I believe, to play than, you know, the trap build, which is... Okay. Stats are not set in stone, I just wanted to start off by saying that. Although haste seems to have a consistent high value all around, simming will usually tell you the best option on paper and by doing so haste seems to rank higher for me than even eye level, but not by enough where sacking the stamina and armor and general survivability could be worth it. After haste it's usually a toss up between versatility and crit which I would personally recommend in this order with mastery being at the bottom, down, lower, real low. Versatility adds a bit of tankiness as well, which is very much appreciated on a spec that is generally squishier than most outside of big cooldowns. Crit is self-explanatory and mastery is... <sighs> mastery is and has been the worst secondary stat for survival and potentially the worst value out of any other spec. It's not negative DPS, so don't freak out, it's just that if the piece of gear does not have haste and has mastery, it's very likely worse than lower eye level pieces. So far. This is all relative because each character is different, the best way to tell is to sim and even sims are not flexible enough to give you the correct answer all the time. If you cannot be bothered with simming and things like this, and it just seems too confusing, just go for the highest high level gear that ideally has haste on it. Don't get mastery. At all. Please. No. No mastery. As always, the weapon enchants will be Sinful Revelation for raids since priority damage takes the cake there, while dungeons and overall content will prefer Celestial Guidance. Your chest will benefit the most from Eternal Skirmish in single target and Eternal stats in AoE with an added bonus of a heavy desolate armor kit for that extra stamina now that the season has just started and pop an eternal agility on your boots for the extra oomph. For your rings, use Tenet of Haste as discussed in the stat section and of course the quick jewel clusters for any newly crafted legendary sockets or any lucky sockets you might still have. As for alchemical consumables, the Phantom Fire Potion will be the best option for single target scenarios while the Potion of Spectral Agility will rock the AoE zone appropriately. Never go outside without a healthy dose of Spectral Flask of Power and if you are using the Phantom Fire Potion, Shadow Core oiling your weapon will boost your deeps nicely. While the Shaded Sharpening Stone and Shaded Weight Stone respectively will work well in all other situations. And we finish it off with the Tenebrous Crown Roast Aspect in any situation or if possible the Feast of Gluttonous Hedonism if the opportunity presents itself and that will probably be just great. When it comes to covenants, it's likely that you were probably Night Fae by now if your covenant choice was made to optimize your DPS. Otherwise, you can just play what you like and not bother too much with it. But if you are interested in the best options out there, you will need to switch to Kyrian. 
Mathematically, Kyrian becomes the best past renowned 57 when all traits are unlocked. You can either wait until 57 is the renowned cap and start your Kyrian grind then, which can be impractical, or switch now and gimp your DPS a tad, like I did. <laughs> Laugh, or it's just sad then. Anyway, starting off, as you are progressing through your renown, you can play either Clea or Palagos. Clea seems to work well right now, going down the pointed courage and the potency slot right after row. With the crit funnel and a bit of defensiveness added with cleansing rites, Clea could be the ideal stepping stone while progressing through the raid. Palagos works as well with the three potency slot build, which is the easiest to get out of him. Even though mastery is poop, it's still a lot of mastery coming in from combat meditation which still gives a good damage boost. Once you reach 57 Renown, Mechanicos will take the cake. Mechanicos sims the best Naoe at the moment, but unlocking the full tree down to Effusive Anima Accelerator, which will bring Resonating Arrow down to a much faster cooldown, will be the best choice in the game. Bronze Call to Action was also buffed to 9.1 to actually proc decently, so overall, you will work your way towards getting the Swole Owl as your main and probably only Soulbind in the future. The build should feature the Hammer of Genesis, which seems to be the best DPS gain here. This is good, remember? Since potency slots will be available more this time around, there are a few to look out for. Enfeebled Mark or Spirit of Tumen, if you're still Night Fae, will be the general ones that go well in all situations. Strength of the pack will remain the general one, especially for the Wildfire Bomb Legendary or Rylak Legendary, while Stinging Strike and Deadly Tandem will be for the pure single target build working especially well with the Trap Legendary and build in general. The Endurance slots can be filled in with Marksman Advantage, good for boss fights in general, Resilience of the Hunter and Rejuvenating Wind will work in all scenarios as well. For the Finesse, definitely get the Reversal of Fortune first since it's the only DPS gain here. Yeah, you'll have to kick spells, it's fine. It's more focus. Cheetah's Vigor will be a good alternative as well. There are a few trinkets to go for outside of the obviously decent ones that just award good amounts of haste or agility. If you'll focus on raiding for any amount of time, Titanic Ocular Gland can be good if you never really drop an HP below 50%, <laughs> which is highly unlikely. So you will probably have to default once again to Dungeon or Vault Trinket. That means Overcharged Anima Battery, Pile of Putrefaction and Infinitely Divisible Ooze all being very solid options and outside battery they are not on unused trinkets freeing up the potential use of a new unused effect weapon. With a new shard system added in Sanctum of Domination, there are three that stand out in terms of DPS gain. The Unholy Shard of Diz, Blood Shard of Beck, and Frost Shard of Core. All of these provide a flat damage increase and are currently the only ones that do this with the exception of an Unholy option that's not that great. Obviously, you won't finish your set bonus with them, but since you can get Domination gear in 5 total slots, you can slot any blood shards you want in the last two gear pieces. Although this will only give you the bonus set in the raid and the maw, so not outside of it. And here we are, baby, been waiting for this. So first off, let's get the trap build out of the way. Nesting where he's trapping apparatus was the Lego I have been mentioning to you the entire time. It gives you a large chunk of focus when you throw a trap that activates and also increases focus gain by 100% for 5 seconds. This legendary not only addresses any potential downtime the spec would have had, it adds a dynamic and a layer of difficulty that most specs do not have. You have to be careful how you use the trap since they might not trigger if you don't aim for the middle of the boss's hitbox, and as of this research, the eye boss does not trigger traps at all. Using this legendary will add not only steel trap to your rotation, but freezing and tar trap as well where you can rotate and should rotate the three for maximum focus management. The other legendary I mentioned, which creates the bomb build, so to speak, is the Wildfire Cluster or the Tactical Wildfire Battle Gear, since why keep only one name? This makes your Wildfire Bombs spawn a cluster of bombs, I believe three, that deal AoE damage to targets affected by the initial bomb hit. Since Wildfire Bomb is an uncapped AoE skill, the bombs being uncapped as well, you will do massive AoE damage that would rival top specs from Season 1 with the potential to be the highest heavy AoE DPS output in the game right now. But shh, 
you didn't hear that from me. Other than this, it works well in any scenario with more than one target, but in terms of raw damage output, the Trap Lego will probably outperform any other option, even in cleave scenarios, think the 9 as an example. The last good legendary, kind of in between the two, is Wallach Stalker's Confounding Strikes. This makes your Raptor Strikes have a chance to refresh a bomb charge. This has more AoE applications than single target, but it's still a good middle ground to use. This raid has seen the return of special effect weapons. Although I know your ass wants that boat to fuck off and be a marksman, you will still get Jotungeir, 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 why? The spear with no stats that can actually proc with an increase in all secondary stats for 30 seconds. Activating the spear will likely put your trinkets on cooldown as well, which can be a bit awkward while setting it all up, and the value of it still eludes me. I remain unconvinced if this will be better than an equal eye level 1 with haste on it since you do get a bunch of stats for 30 seconds, but for 2.5 minutes you have no secondary stats as payment. It's good for burst phases, which raid encounters prefer. Still, cool it's not a bland stats thing. The standard opener for survival starts with Serpent Sting into your Covenant ability and Coordinated Assault plus Potion, then proceeding to the rotational priority. For the trap build, the priority is as follows. Coordinated Assault on cooldown, Kill Shot on cooldown, Aspect of the Eagle when forced out of melee for mechanics, Consume Viper's Venom procs with Serpent Sting, Prevent Capping Wildfire Bomb charges by throwing one out, Mongoose Bite if it's the last global you can fit into the Coordinated Assault window, Wildfire Bomb again to prevent capping if the Mongoose Bite buff will not expire by the time you would otherwise cap on bomb charges. Otherwise, if you have no stacks of Mongoose Fury, then simply use Wildfire Bomb to refresh the dot. Kill Command so long as you don't focus cap. Steel Trap with the same disclaimer. Serpent Sting to refresh the dot if you don't have Coordinator Assault up. Resonating Arrow on cooldown. Mongoose Bite here if your stacks are up or to prevent capping focus or if Coordinator Assault is active. Cast Wildfire Bomb if nothing else is available. With this priority, you should get an idea of what is more important to cast than anything else. While using the Trap build, you need to remember that your strength comes from extending Coordinator Assault with Mongoose Bites, and you use more of those, the better you optimize your traps, which should follow the Steal first, then Freeze, then Tar in terms of priority. In dungeons, specifically on packs, the opener is more or less the same and the priority will place more focus on optimizing your wildfire bomb charges and their individual effects with the wildfire infusion talent. Never cap on wildfire bomb charges, so always throw one out to prevent reaching two charges and denying the value of carve. Your next most important spell to cast is carve, so long as you have your bombs on cooldown so you can maximize the cooldown reduction. Use Flanking Strike for Focus Generation followed by Kill Command when it comes to Focus Generation priority. AoE is very focus heavy and you will more often than not run out of it if you don't optimize your Kill Command casts. Ideally, you will never want to use either of these two if you will cap on focus though, clearly. Apply Serpent Sting to as many targets as you can so long as you don't sacrifice any of the previous points made. Speaking of Serpent Sting, keeping a decent amount of the debuffs out will make your green bomb do extra burst damage and refresh the active Serpent Stings on your enemies. If you see the red one coming, make sure you dump your focus as much as possible so you can bomb and then spam kill command for a quick bar focus. This works better if you have the tip of the spear talent since you will get 3 stacks of it before you can focus cap by following this mindset. And for the blue bomb, you do the opposite. You spam as many kill commands to have an almost full bar focus which you can quickly dump on raptor strikes and or carve to apply the bleed. In single target, reaching the 3 stacks of the bleed before the blue bomb debuff expires will maximize your DPS. Whether you are in AoE or single target, the optimizing of wildfire infusion should never come at the cost of you messing up your normal priority rotation, aka don't cap on charges or resources or cooldowns. And now, maybe you can see where the difficulty of the spec comes from. Practice makes perfect, and the satisfaction from playing it right is hard to find in most spec currently. We would like to give a shout out to the True Shot Lodge community on Discord where all the big hunters talk all day about survival and other hunter specs. As a Thorian's Icy Veins guide which included some pretty nifty things that uh, we used to help create a better, more informative guide. You can check that out for more advanced stuff. And of course, Mandel 
for being one of the best theory crafters and also looking over our script as he is a pretty good survival hunter and pointing out what we had wrong. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you to our Patreons for supporting the channel and everything that we do. We're back with the class, guys, baby. Fuck yeah. TLFs every Friday. You probably already saw it this Friday. And of course, podcasts and on cooldown episodes on top of the streams and everything else that we do. Thank you very much, dear Patreons. You're definitely making our dream possible. Thank you. And if you, dear viewer, are interested in supporting us a little bit more, check the link down below. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.